All right, I want to explain this attack. Web cache poisoning via HTTP2 request tunneling. Now this page from Portswigger explains how this attack works. You have a front-end server which passes to a back-end server which can cache web pages. And if you're able to inject carriage return line feeds into an HTTP request, you can make a request that actually includes two requests which will pass through the front end and then be interpreted as two separate requests at the back end. And these requests will then add to the locally cached information that can be shown to other people who are viewing data. And the particular version that we're doing here is this one, non-blind request tunneling using head. You use the head method, which should not return any data, but um, it often has a length parameter a header which would match the get request even though it's not data is not supposed to be there and if the front end server fails to account for this it will read that amount of data from the server so it can have extra data here which consists of the header and body of another um, request here so by if you inject two requests and you hit the cache correctly which involves a certain amount of luck then the response can contain the page with the header and the content of that page in the body of this request. And that means we can exploit a cross-site scripting vulnerability in the header fields because this technique will move the header fields to the body and that's what we're going to do. So let me close a couple tabs here and open the lab. <clears throat> All right, so here's the lab and I want to go to burp in HTTP history and just clear all the old data, clear history, to make it easier to find the request I need, and then just refresh this home page. And here's the get that gets the home page getting slash. This is the request I want to use. So I send that to the repeater, and here you see it's using HTTP2, and in the inspector you can see it's using HTTP2, and so we can now try a few attacks here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is check for injecting carriage return line feed. And let me show you what's going on here. Um, I'm going to change the path parameter in the HTTP2 into this, where it has a carriage return line feed. It has a meaningless parameter, cache buster equals one, is going to load slash by HTTP 1.1 and then have a parameter after it. And the point is, there's a carriage return line feed right there. And if it allows me to inject that carriage return line feed, then the original request, which you can see on the left here, get HTTP, host, cookie, and so on, here's the original request. After injection, that will turn into this, HTTP1, and this foo bar will eat up the HTTP2. It will just appear to be part of this meaningless foo parameter. I'll have a valid request which will work. The only difference is it'll load the home page with a meaningless parameter over HTTP 1.1. But if I can't inject these, um, this carriage return right here, then this foo bar stuff will end up on this line, and this line will not end with an HTTP version, so I'll get a um, 404 invalid request. So this is the test to see if I can inject carriage return line feeds in to the front end over HTTP2. So I go to the request headers and go to the path and I put in that code. Put the carriage return line feed in the extra parameters. I apply changes and send it and the response is okay. And if I render it, I just see the home page. So this means it did let me inject a carriage return line feed, which is good. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is change the method to head and inject this injection. And the point of this is it's going to have the same request here, and then it's going to have a second request there that's just going to load one of the posts on this blog, just so I can see if this is going to work. So let's put that in here. That's the contents that goes here, a cache buster equal two just to mark it, and a host, then a blank line to end that request, then another request that's going to load one of the posts from the blog. And I have to change the method to head. So I go here to method and change get to head. 
All right. Now, when I send this one, the response, see here is part of the response included as the data in the body of the file. So this has worked, and by the way, you can also observe this in the browser. If you put that parameter here, cache buster equals two, with a question mark in front of it. There, so it'll work here too. So now if you look at what's happened here in raw, you'll see I am now included um, content of the second page in here as body, which is what I wanted to do. So let's go on to the third part. All right, by the way, another thing to notice here is the length of the response. Let's just render it again. Notice the length is 9,369. That's gonna be important in a minute. All right, now we're gonna try getting resources. So let's get another copy of the original request from the proxy here, this get. I'm gonna send it to the repeater. So I have the original clean request. And here I just wanna get the resources page. And the only point of this, well, you'll see, I send the get resources, and the response says 302 found location resources with a slash. So this word resources seems to be repeated from my request. So it might be interesting to find out if I can inject a parameter here with a script in it. So I could put a question mark and script alert one and slash script. Okay, if I put it in there and send that, then the 302 found echoes that data back. Now this is in the header, so it wouldn't fire, but because of the tunneling, these header fields are gonna appear in the body, and so it will fire, the JavaScript will run. So that proves this kind of attack will work. So now we can do the tunneling attack here. Let me get my injection code. Okay, so I go back to this one, which is my head request, and I change the path, get rid of this old stuff, and here's the new stuff. I label it cache buster equal three. It's got a complete request up here, and down here it has that get requests with the question mark, and then a script alert one slash script. So I'm trying to do cross-site scripting. So I apply changes. And now I send this one, and the response is going to time out. And the reason it's going to time out is because it's trying to load 9,319 bytes or something of data, and I didn't put enough data here. So I have to add enough data to fill that up. So I've got 1,000 bytes I put in my clipboard. After the slash script tag, I have to put in um, 1,000, 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 10,000 bytes of data. So now let's send that one. Oh, I forgot to save it. So I have to apply changes. Okay, now it's gonna be there and I have to wait for this previous one to time out. Okay, but this one now has the extra 10,000 bytes. So I send that one. And it looks like it might time out too, but this probably means I just need to wait for the cache to clear. And if you go to raw, yeah, I'm getting an internal server error, proxy error. So uh, I might have to wait for a 30 second timeout. I've seen this happen before. Once you confuse the proxy. Let's try another. Cache Buster 3, this is the right request. Wait, I don't have the, I don't see the 10,000 in there. That data doesn't seem to have been saved. Um, yep, that's the problem. Somehow the 10,000 bytes did not get in there. Let me try this again. I'm going to go here and put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
and apply changes. All right, and now let's send that one. There, it worked. The 302 is here and it's got that data and I can also see that one in the browser. If I go here and change Cache Buster to 3, it loads in the browser and it runs the pop-up. So now I've got an attack that lets me run script here. So to finish it, all I have to do is get the home page to have that script pop up. So for that, I remove this cache buster part here and resend it, apply changes and resend it to poison the plain home page. And now I poison the plain home page for 30 seconds. And now I go to the lab and I load the home page without this parameter. And it pops up. Um, all right. And I expected to win. But um, somehow I'm not winning. All right. Anyway, that's the... Uh, Remove the cache buster from the path and resend and browser visit the home page to win. Yeah, it should do it. Um, but I'm not seeing the real page. There, now I've won. Now I've solved the lab. Okay, I don't know why it didn't pop up, but I did run it. And then after I wait for the cache to clean up so I can see the home page, now I've won. So that's what I wanted to show you.